<clears throat> what we're going to work on today is using GeoGebra to mathematically or visually model the flight of a projectile by combining the equations we've used in class with the power of the GeoGebra system to see a projectile motion. Specifically, we want to be able to uh, change the initial velocity, the angle, and the acceleration of gravity and see how those variables affect the flight of a projectile. Um, to begin with, we're going to define the variables that we want to adjust. And so to do that, we click on the input bar and we type in the name of the variable. We'll type in initial velocity, VI. It's going to ask me if I want to create a slider for that. I'm going to say yes, because that's how I'm going to control the initial velocity. We do the same thing for the angle. And in order to put a, the Greek letter theta in, I click on the alpha button on the bottom right hand side. And I pick theta, hit enter, and yes, I want a slider. I'm going to put uh, acceleration, I want to say acceleration of gravity, a g, hit enter, and yes, I want a slider. And also to control the path of the ball, we're going to put a time slider in so we can slide that and that'll uh, make the ball move. So we'll put t, hit enter, then we have our four sliders. We're going to go ahead and click the move button and drag the, oops. I'm going to drag the axis over a little bit to the right. So we have a little more room to work with. We I inadvertently scaled that, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger of a scale here. There we go. So we're going to adjust uh, the four sliders by right-clicking on the numbers area and go to properties. So the initial velocity we'd never want to be negative, so we're going to make the minimum value 0 and the maximum value 30 and leave it at 0.1 increments. The time we would never want to be negative, again we'll make it go up to 30, and we'll add a resolution of 0 0.05, so we get a few more points on that. Uh, theta is going to rest between 0 and 90, and the acceleration of gravity we're going to set to be between negative 20 and 0. And we'll close that. So now we have our slider set. We'll set the gravity slider to negative 9.8 just so we're ready to test on the Earth. Everything else can stay how it is for now. So in order to launch the ball, I'm going to want to use my equations for the x and y direction we used in class. In the x direction, we know the velocity is constant, so we just use the fact that dx equals the x velocity times time. And the y direction, we would use the Dozier equation to plot the vertical position of the ball. Uh, so before I can use either of those, I have to find the x and y components of the velocity. And GeoGebra will do that for me. In the input bar, I'm going to type vx for the x velocity and type equals vi times the cosine, put parentheses, of the angle theta. Now GeoGebra does all of its trigonometry in radians. And we want to use degrees, so we have to add a degree symbol after the theta sign in order to convert it. The degree symbol is listed by the Greek characters right in the bottom row, the tiny circle. I insert that into the equation, press enter, and now the program is going to compute Vx for me. I also want to compute Vy, so say Vy equals Vi times the sine of the angle. So we're going to do theta in degrees and press enter. As you can see now, as I adjust the angle theta, both the Vx and the Vy change, and I get the 45 there to max, and then they go up and down respectively. If I increase the Vi, they both get bigger. That's what we'd expect. Um, so now before we make the point that will represent our projectile, we need to establish and set up the functions that will control the x and y coordinate of that point. And so in the x direction, we know there's no acceleration, so we'll use the uh, dx equals vx times t. So I'll say dx equals vx times t and press enter. Now I have a, fun I have a value for dx with when these variables are met. I also can do dy equals vi times t plus 0.5 times acceleration of gravity times time to the second and press enter. And so now as time progresses, the dx and the dy change respectively. 
So now we're going to create the point P that represents the projectile. So I'm going to uh, type in um, P equals parenthesis dx comma dy. So that's going to give me a point P whose x coordinate is dx and y coordinate is dy. Press enter. Now, since right now dx and dy are zero, point P is at the origin. If I move the time slider, I can watch the ball go up and then fall down. So that wasn't very high, so we can change the initial velocity and make it 5. The ball goes a little higher and then falls down. I'm moving the time slider by pressing the left and right arrows. I'm going to send it back. I want to be able to make slightly higher velocity, so I'm going to change the maximum velocity to 30. So now I'm making the initial velocity 15, and again, I can do the same thing. I then move the time slider, it's going to go higher. Eventually it's going to reach an apex and fall down. In order to watch this happen better, I'm going to add a trace to that point. So let's just test our theory on complementary angles. They produce the same range. So I'm going to make the angle here 30. That VI, and I'm going to move the slider and let it go. It's going to trace the path of the ball. It's just going to land somewhere over there, so we're going to have to scale this a little bit. We scale by clicking on the axis, getting that sideways arrow, and then scaling it like that. So we have to retrace the path of the path of the ball, and we can see where it lands. Now we're going to change the angle to 60, or a reset the timer. Change the angle to 60. And if our theory is correct, then this should land in the same place. So it goes higher, reaches the point, and either our math or our theory there is incorrect. So let's go back and fix that a little bit later. The other thing we want to do before we get too far now is we want to add some words on top here. So we're going to go to the text box, and we're going to add that now. So we're going to say that x position equals, I mean go to objects now, and it's going to list that point for us. Now we don't want the whole, I'll give you a preview here, we don't want the whole coordinate pair, we just want the x coordinate of the coordinate pair. So I click right in front of the p, still inside the box, but next to the p, and do x parenthesis around the p, and you can see in the preview now it just gives me the x component of the point, then meters, and just anything for the y equals, add that point p, So the y coordinate of the point P in meters, and then the time so now someone using the spreadsheet can see what is happening. Let's go back and find our mistake. So let's check our variables. Here's double click on them, and you'll get the formulas again. Oh, here it is. So you can see there, I put in VI for that. I mean, not there. I think in here, yeah, this versus VI there. This should be the VY. Come out the Y component initial velocity. Hit OK. Now all the data refreshed. If it hadn't refreshed on the screen, I click on the Edit and then uh, or View, sorry, and refresh views, and it would clear everything. So let's reset our timer. Or the view, refresh views, set our angle back to 30 again. And now we can just right click here and go to animation on. It's going to animate it for me. And there's the ball flying through the air. I'm going to stop the animation. We'll roll this back. Change this angle to 60. And we're going to start our animation. And there we can see they land at the same point. And that's how we're going to be able to model different physical phenomena using GeoGebra.